Hey there, the holidays are upon us and every year I have the same question. What do I get people for the holidays? Last year was really fun. I was able to turn photos into 3D printed objects called lithophanes. The biggest problem I had with these last year is that they're really difficult to light up. But this year, I think I found something even better than the flat lithophanes, and that would be lithophane ornaments. These things are so cool. I gave these to some of my friends the other day and it brought them to tears. They were saying how, like, can you get me more of these? I want to share these with my family, my grandma, my friends, my daughters. Like, it's incredible how much people actually enjoy these. But also, that's one of the best parts is giving a gift to someone that they actually appreciate and they want to share with others. So the majority of this video is going over how to make one of these lithophane ornaments. But if you don't have access to a printer or a library that has a 3D printer, you can also check the Etsy shop in the description to the side over here. There's a lot of people that make these and they're a really good gift and I highly recommend them. So check it out. So how do you make one of these? Well, it's not as hard as you would think. The hardest part really is figuring out what photos you're going to use. So for example, these orbs that I'm using here, I need to make sure that the proportions of the images I'm using are the correct size. So that would be the vertical would be one and the horizontal would be three. So a one by three ratio. Um, this can be done pretty easy on a number of photo softwares. For this one, I'm going to be using Photoshop. So a few things about your images. First off, make sure that they're super cute. I would try to keep them within when it comes to faces in like the middle third or the top third you don't want to go anything beyond that because they start to get pretty distorted on the orb face in situations where your photo may not quite reach the very top you want to make sure that you can either fill that with either a white space or in my case i fill it with a gray border i like a little bit of thickness towards the top you can also do this border on the bottom and shift them up it's really wherever you want them but hey, if you don't like the white, black, or gray border, that's fine. You can add your own festive border. Get creative with it. This is a gift, and hopefully they'll enjoy it as much as you enjoy putting it together. So here's the step to step to make a lithophan using its litho. So now that you've opened up the litho maker here, you'll see that there's a blank page. You want to go and upload your photo. Go into upload. You'll see that the demo ornament is already uploaded. So next you'll want to come up here to the profiles. There are several profiles seen up here, but the one we're choosing is the Christmas ball. Here you should see that the ball, you'll notice that the widths are pretty high at the top. We're going to change this to 75 so that it, it reduces the size at the top. And now what I'm looking for is I want to make sure that all the images are there. So you see like we'll have a cropped face. You want to make sure that you fit the entire image. So then you have your full face showing up. And then lastly, um, I always keep the tops and bottoms of mine open, but you can go over here in the uh, attributes and click close bottom if you would like this to be a solid on the bottom or not. But if you want to have my clips, make sure that you have 75. And once all that's done and your image is looking good in the lithophane, you're ready to download. It's as easy as that. Once you have your lithophane as a STL file, you'll want to bring it over to your favorite slicing software for your 3D printer. There's a number of uh, adjustments that people recommend. The big things to keep an eye on is to reduce the layer lines. Typically when I do most of my prints, they're at 0.2 millimeters. For lithophane specifically, I change it to 0.12. You can go even a higher detail. It's gonna improve the resolution by your photo that much more. Additionally, people have different ideas of whether you should increase the infill to 99%, not 100, or keep the infill, whatever it is, and change your layer lines from Th maybe three or four to say 10, something so that every layer is as full as possible because you don't want to leave any gaps or have any infill in this image. You want the full photo that you're trying to project visualize in 3D for the lithophane to show its full potential or rather its full resolution. The only other thing, if you're using some slicers such as I use uh, Prusa Slicer, you may need to repair the STL that's imported because there's a lot of polygons and if you don't repair it, it will sometimes fill in the inside, so you won't have the, the gaps as what you're hoping for. So in Prusa Slicer, for example, I have to click Repair with NetFab. And that takes a while, but once it finishes, I've yet to have any issues with it printing perfectly. And with that, I think you're ready to print. Mm -hmm. 
I love these things. These are so much fun. Of the people I have given these to, one question keeps coming up, and that is, how did you make this? Rather than telling them, how about you check out this next video so you can show them exactly how you made this. And with that, thanks for watching.